Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's having a great day thus far. Hey, Jax, how you doing? I'm doing good. Happy Thursday, latter half of the week. Gorgeous tings, gorgeous tings. Oh my God. <laughs> gorgeous tings, gorgeous tings. <laughs> I can't go cross-eyed, but if I could, now one would be of, the time. One of my absolute favorite things on the planet to do is to like go cross-eyed. I think it's one of my greatest talents. I've recently started incorporating it into my comedy. It's and pure it, comedy. It's pure comedy. And as a kid, like I was told a thousand times you're gonna get stuck that way so I used to be really afraid to do it and then a few years ago I was like wait I'm not gonna get stuck that way like what if I just you know yeah yeah I love it no I'm I'm jealous that you have and I'm ability. not one of those people who has to like do you know with the finger I like can, no I only I'm can natural. do finger I'm no, organic it's literally part of your comedic routine it's like adding a curse word to a to a joke like it just has gives it a little punch it gives an extra oomph yeah, so that's like another thing. You should we should add that to your list because we're always like, what are your talents or Skills. what are my talents? Like, obviously, you have the singing. Mm -hmm. You have I can go cross eyed. Natural charisma, comedy. Yeah. She can go cross eyed. Yeah, no, I adds a little spice, you know. Yeah. How are so, you? I'm good. Guy just tings. 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 How are you? How is do? How is our holistic king of acupuncture? Yes, Theo took a trip east yesterday. Actually, we went south. It was downtown. Um, and it was good. He got his first acupuncture session. He responded very well to it. She was like, wow, I wish all my patients were like this. He was so chill. Very zen. He is zen. He is and zen embodified. Embodified, yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's the word? Embodied or personified. You, <laughs> you no. joined them together. He's embodified. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Um, he did really well. I, she said, you know, it's a journey. You know, sometimes there are miracles. You know, he walks out of here perfect. But, you know, most of the time it takes a couple of sessions. And so we're going to do that once a week. You know, radiation in the beginning of the weeks, acupuncture a few days later, seeing if one of these Eastern or Western remedies are going to, you know, help my boy, hopefully. It's East versus West, sharks versus jets. And the thing is, I would love to, you know, have this, you know, one of them work and we can definitively say which one it is and then we can finally put to bed, you know, is it East versus West that really works? But we won't know which one worked. We're just hoping one of them. But perhaps if it does work, Baruch Hashem, it would be a fusion of East and West. You know, mm -hmm. finally, it's not about the competition. It's about no, the it coming would, Jackie, together. It would be North. It would be South. It would be Central. South Central. East, West, North. South, too. No? Yeah. Snoo. News. Or Snoo. Really? S N Eaton? Yeah, Snoo. Yeah. When's? Just a little compass fun let's for you about, today. Let's talk about the compass app. Let's talk about the compass in general as an invention. Well, compass or compass? Depends who you it's, are. Personal. It's compass. It's personal. Potato, potato. Because you just said both in one sentence. I did? Yeah, you said compass and then compass. I guess it just depends on where in the sentence it falls. Am it's I true. feeling like, like enunciating in this part of the sentence or not? Like with the word D-A-T-A, -A, I don't have a preferred enunciation, pronunciation. It's just like I could use it twice in the same day and use it totally differently, data or data. Like That's it how I feel it's about not a preference. compass, compass. Compass, yeah. What were you going to say about the compass as a, an invention? The compass greater than. It is such an incredible invention. I think it, it was one of those inventions that really changed the world. Industrialized. You know, one large leap for mankind, one small device for man. So true. It's so true. really a marvel. I know now we just like look at the app on our phone or our car tells us which way we're facing, but I think we take it for granted. Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, like I use directions. I feel like most people are like, who needs a compass? Um, north south like it's not a big part of their every day but in the city in actually, new york city it is it is because there's east side west side uptown downtown which is north south east and west and when i'm in the city i actually at all times really do know which way is north which way is south which way is east and which way is west which i feel like kind of cool about yeah and if you don't you get out your compass and then you know exactly where you are yeah like i love to you know be in a taxi and be like you know it'll be southeast corner 
oh yeah i am lewis and clark navigational clean yeah 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 no like when i pull those words out that's like a like the, your that's job you know you're, know you're like a you're a new yorker yeah yeah like i think somebody you know lesser than me would say oh the far right corner but i would know that that far right corner is actually the southwest corner depending on where i'm coming from yeah and also it's the far right corner from the angle you're coming at it from but it's the southwest corner universally so lewis and clark had nothing on jackson turd and jackson turd are the modern day lewis and clark trailblazing queens I would also say Jackson Turd are the modern day Bonnie and Clyde. I would say so too, but we have a reverence for the Lala Turd. It's true, it's true. Except for- I was just trying to think of except like for iconic duos. the records from Yale about the three identical strangers. Once we do steal those, so, steal those sealed records from Yale, we will be the modern day version of Bonnie, of Bonnie and Clyde. And Clyde. Right. But we won't be driving away in a convertible. We will be driving away in a pickup truck. That's okay. us. Or a Tesla. Or whatever we can get our hands on at the rent a center, you know? Yeah, well, I heard that you can rent a Tesla at Hertz now. If you've Is that been, true? Yeah, if you've been wanting to try out the experience. That's actually like a perfect thing to do when you're on vacation. Like, try a new car. Let me tell you how one of my favorite things is renting a car. Like, the actual journey of getting off the plane, walking to the rental, waiting in line is torture. But when you get a, the keys and you're like, sometimes they let you choose from a whole section of cars and you just get to try out different cars that you're never going to really have in your own life like it's very exciting yeah I feel like most of the times I've done rental cars obviously I haven't rented a car myself but you know with Zach or with you always and with, wait Jackie why haven't you rented a car yourself because I've never had my license at a time when I rented a car yeah but, and also it's just like Girls don't rent cars. That's like a thing for the husbands. That's like such a husband job. We to used to rent a car, car once in a while and we flush the keys down the toilet and now the Jaguar is still sitting in Connecticut and you're never going to be able to buy a home with your credit. Oh my God, I totally forgot that moment. I don't know how we could talk about car rentals without talking about the extremely hasty blush. And yes, I do often think about that car sitting in that rest stop in Connecticut. And I also do... <laughs> get a pit every time I get like an Experian email, like a change in your credit. You know, usually it's like your credit it's limit. coming usually, back to haunt you. Usually it's like little things, like, you know, your credit limit increased or, you, you know, spent more this month and you didn't pay it down. Right, right, right. But one day it's just gonna say, there's been a change in your credit, Jaguar. Yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, it's such a long, amazing story and there's a whole episode on it's, it. The episode is called The Extremely Hasty Flush and you absolutely need to listen to it. It's a cautionary tale for all drivers out there, rental car owners and people who go to rest stops. And if you're not gonna listen, here's the lesson. Do not put your rental car keys in your bra when going to take a piss at a rest stop, especially a rest stop that has automatic flushes, okay? So we'll leave you with that. Yeah. Where were we? You could rent a Hertz. Uh, you I mean, could you could rent, rent a, a Tesla. Tesla when we're driving away with the records because we're the Bonnie modern day Body and Clyde, Lewis Compass. and Clark. Compass. Compass. We needed to center ourselves, Dirty. Wait. I wanted to say a few things from yesterday's episode because a lot of people had very good um, responses to like some of the things we had said. The first thing when we were talking about Mark Cuban, there's a lot of conspiracy theories now about Mark Cuban. A lot of people think he might be running for office. Okay. Good luck um, with that. Good luck with that. Kenzie Elizabeth actually texted me because she's like a Dallas girl and she listens to The Toast. Is it about the pharmaceutical company? Yes. So we, he talks about it on Shark Tank a lot, but his most recent project I think is like his biggest passion project where it's like a website to get people medications for like any and all diseases, ailments at like the cheapest possible rate. And he's like a really passionate about it. Like, you know, $16 for cancer drugs that would normally cost $2,000. Mm -hmm. So it's very expensive. Apparently he's like very, very invested in it, obviously financially, but also like emotionally. And maybe he like wanted to cash out to put that money towards this particular project. Okay. Um, but then there was like another conspiracy theory I saw going around on TikTok that, you know, Dallas is like a big sports town, but they don't have any infrastructure yet for sports gambling and casinos. And I think there's like a bunch of very wealthy people trying to get that initiative off the ground. And he might have sold to put money towards that because that's going to be like a billion multi-billion dollar journey and interesting also is that the Adelson family like does casinos and resorts yes so, they are the sands right so maybe like their part in this has to do with that too yeah and then I also heard that this Adelson fam had to cash out two billion of their shares from sands to pay for the maps right so maybe they're just like moving the the 
their business down to yeah. Dallas. So it was a nice idea that he wanted to, you know, spend time with his family. But I do think there's like a, a business thing going on. I don't think he's running for office. I don't think so either. I think the pharmaceutical thing makes sense. I hope he has success with it. Someone needs to overhaul the pharmaceutical system yeah. in this country. Like it yeah. makes no sense. No, it's a it disgrace. Is, it's a disgrace. Like these are life-saving medications. Like every, like all medication, it's helping someone. Like what is, why is it like this? No, it's an absolute disgrace. And I agree. If anyone can do it, I think it could be Mark Cuban. Yeah, I think so too. Good luck with that. Yeah, we truly wish you well. If you need to take a step back <laughs> and ruin one of our favorite shows, then for this, it's okay. But thankfully, it's an ensemble show and it is my personal belief that the show won't be ruined without Mark. Me neither. The show the will thing, go on. The other thing I wanted to talk about, somebody made such an excellent point when we, I, I didn't know if people were going to agree with us or the the sentiment of The weekend being an industry plant was going to resonate with people. But it was just like this feeling that I had and then you felt it. And I guess a lot of people felt it too. And somebody offered a really good explanation for why he feels like an industry plant. And they basically just said like, who goes to listen to The weekend? It's mostly just straight men who don't really participate or contribute to like stan culture. So they don't have, you know, Twitter accounts tracking all of The weekends, charting and everything. They don't have fan accounts. They just listen and move on with their lives. And, you know, that is powerful. And obviously there's enough people who do that. But the reason why we're not seeing that sort of energy reception and, and why it feels like a plant is because they're not putting that energy out there. They don't participate in like fan culture, straight men. They just enjoy Okay, I agree with you, except about the fact that straight men don't participate in fan culture. The NFL. Sports. Yeah, sports. Nobody maybe. is more of a fan girly than those guys. Like okay, every it's... weekend, getting dressed up in costume, painting their faces, yeah. having a party, like nuts. Oh They're my nuts. God. Okay, there's NFL drama. Did you hear about this? It's the so The little crazy. kid? Yes. <laughs> it's the craziest thing. Okay, let me tell you. So Deadspin, which is like this website. Sports publication. Sports, Yeah. So they published an article about this little kid who was at the Chiefs game last weekend who was apparently wearing blackface and because they're the Chiefs, which is like Native American, he was wearing a big Native American headdress. So they had a picture of the kid from the side. You saw his whole, he must've been eight years old. He's nine. Not, oh wow, okay. His whole big headdress and then his face is completely black. And so of course they like roasted this child to filth. And it has come out recently I mean, it has come out since that article came out. They were using like a photo of the kid where you only saw the side of his face. And if you saw him head on, he had half red, half black, which are the chief's colors, which is not blackface. And this kid is Native American. Right. His grandfather was actually like a really major uh, like leader in the Chumash tribe. And if he wants to wear a Native American headdress, like he absolutely can do that. I just don't know why in the first place, like Deadspin was going after an eight year old. What has the world come to? No, it's so sick. That story is literally an accurate representation of the media. Like they think they slayed, let's, you know, skewer this eight year old, he's doing bad. And then it's actually not the whole picture, literally. Literally. And it's like, I'm sure none of the people who worked on that article have any ties to Native Americans actually give a shit about him wearing the headdress, but it's like, actually he does. No, it was such a crazy turn of events. I was like following the whole thing on TikTok. Um, yeah. Context is key. Context is key. And then speaking of cancellations, I'm sure you have it as a story. Gary? No, I don't because I'm like kind of avoiding all Gary tings. Um, yeah, me too, because we're trying, we're saving the Golden Bachelor for our family trip. Well, oh, by the way, by as the predicted. Way, hold on. I just, I'm pretty sure, I need to correct this. I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Jerry. But the reason why we're confused is because we thought it should be J-E-R-R-Y. Like, no, Jackie, it's Gary. No, 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 Claudia. No, I remember when this happened, like we did a reel about the Golden Bachelor and we were like, and it's Jerry. And then the issue was we spelled it wrong in our reel. It's supposed to be G-E-R-R-Y. Oh, so people were saying it's spelled Jerry, not pronounced Gary. <laughs> yeah, but we were confused because it's like, okay, if it's but if it's with a G, then it's Gary. Jackie, I just want to say, and I don't want to go looking for clips because you're right, like we'll end up spoiling it for ourselves. I'm 95% sure it's Gary, both spelled and pronounced. I think it's spelled Gary, pronounced Jerry. Well, Gary Jerry has been canceled. We literally said like a year ago that he was gonna get canceled. And I, like we were joking, but it's so absurd because it actually did happen. You know, apparently all alleged, you know, his ex-wife who is dead, he said he wanted her to lose 10 pounds and she couldn't come to his high school reunion unless she lost the 10 pounds. And he started, you know, a, a new relationship one month after she died. Like, okay, and whose fucking business is that? 
And who? So how what did if we, he started dating someone a month after? How do we know he told his ex-wife to lose 10 pounds? Because she came back from the dead and told the New York Post. Like, I don't for know. real. For real. No, I didn't read the article. I only read the headlines because I don't want to spoil it. But like, I can't believe we're trying to cancel this geriatric, this geriatric. <laughs> Literally. He likes um, a svelte woman. No, but like, okay. You're kidding me, right? Like, this is so and also, absurd. Like, I, first of all, I'm going to need proof. And second of all, yeah. like, I'm just, I don't know. Like, I, it's just I'm just rude. not canceling the, the oldest man on the planet. Like, I'm just not. I'm not canceling the golden bachelor. No, it's, I can't. I can't. It's it's actually sad. When there are so many cancel worthy things happening right now, and very few cancellations. So Gary, I'm not going to waste my breath. Doesn't on Gary. even make my list of one thousand. No, it's so true. Like let the man be fat phobic in peace, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but it also has been proven that he's even fat phobic. No, let I the know. Man it's like be allegedly fat phobic in peace. No, it's so true. Like how do we know that these conversations took place when one of the people is dead and the other? is Gary. He's not going to tell the New okay, York Post. But I did see a headline. I didn't click on it, but now that you're mentioning it, that he told, it was an ex-girlfriend that he told to lose 10 pounds. Oh, oh, and oh, she oh, might oh. be living. But I didn't, that's my putting Well, two. she sounds like a scorned lover. For sure. You can't take her seriously. <laughs> okay, the Hollywood Reporter. The Golden Bachelors, not so golden past. Hey, let's so, get into it. Let's get into it. By sharp contrast to the young cads with six pack abs previous, okay, I don't need like their. Their editorialization and, and word count so that you can hit as many advertisers as possible. Still grieving a widower. Oh, Gary, pronounced Gary. Oh, it's like Gary. G A R Y. It's pronounced G A I R Y. So you're adding a third pronunciation to the mix. Hollywood Reporter is not me. Cried real tears during the opening episode when he recounted the story of Tony, his beloved wife of 43 years, who tragically died of, of an infection just one month after their move to their dream retirement house in Hudson, Indiana. It was a dramatic backstory, but our bachelor was able to switch gears and interact easily with the attractive and equally senior. Okay, I don't want to see. Hold on, let me just find. Yeah. You might have to go to a different publication that like doesn't take itself so seriously and just gives you the tea. So he had told Entertainment Tonight that he hadn't dated in 45 years because he was married for 43. Oh, I was like, okay, that makes sense. Despite, despite the vetting, The Hollywood Reporter has discovered several inconsistencies. Oh, no. <laughs> regarding both his work history. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I read, I saw this on TikTok. They're literally dragging him, like, for his LinkedIn, okay? Regarding both his no, work history. No, Claudia, we did that yesterday to what? the poet. Shut up. <laughs> they, they have found inconsistencies regarding both his work history and recent romantic entanglements that contradict the received narrative. Whether they never learned about these discrepancies, ABC, or ignored them to sell a buffed up shinier storyline for the greater impact, producers presented an incomplete and misleading image of Turner, which The Bachelor helped perpetuate in personal remarks. But it was just a buffed up story to... Make him like I think they called him to, a restaurateur to accentuate he, his impact. No, that's what they said. Listen, it's it's show business, baby. A buffed no, up story so to true. accentuate his impact. I can live with. He's identified in Chiron's throughout the show as a retired restaurateur, which is a fancy way to say he owns or owned a restaurant with all of its attendant fun and glamour. But according to his profile on LinkedIn. <laughs> Gary last owned a restaurant in eight, 1985 when he sold his Mr. Quick Hamburger drive-in franchise in Iowa, Iowa, where he'd worked his way up from high school. Well, that's impressive. Right. After that, he held various sales and management positions in the meat business, again, per his LinkedIn resume, which does not list an end date for his employment. No. This does not match up with the idea that was pushed on the show that he retired at the young age of 55, which would have been 2006. Never mentioned are his years of pickup post-retirement work, like installing hot tubs at Gannon Pools near Davenport, Iowa. He then worked as a maintenance man. This is Wait, so Claudia, Claudia, elitist. He, he's canceled because he didn't disclose he was installing hot tubs? He then worked as a maintenance man at the Vera French Mental Health Center, also in the Davenport area, as verified by his colleagues who spoke highly of him. Hard all, working this man. Is this is so makes me entitled. Like yeah, of course. No, First of all, he worked at a burger joint in high school. Years later, he worked his way up to being the owner of that franchise, sold it, and then didn't rest on his laurels and got more jobs. No job too big or too small for him. This is a dream man. 
Yeah, so I guess the wh- wh- the Hollywood Reporter is upset that like maybe the bachelor just kind of condensed the story. He owned restaurants, he sold and and retired. But okay, where's the crime? So then he came to know a woman, they're calling her Carolyn, with whom he would go on to have a nearly three-year relationship with, beginning innocently enough a month after his wife's death. Attractive and 14 years his junior, she was a staff accountant at the mental health center. They dated for 10 months and then lived together for a year and nine months. This account is drawn from interviews with Carolyn, who requested not to be named to protect her privacy, as well as friends she confided in at the time, and text messages with Gary, among other documents. So wait, the, say they, they dated for they, 10 they, months? After... Say, after no, his wife again. died. They dated for 10 months and they lived together for a year? And nine months. So almost but two years. They were only dating for 10 of those months. No, no, no. The total, they were together for three years. 10 months. Dating. Not living together. A month, a year and nine months living together. So three years almost. Okay, but not three years because they met, they knew each other for three years, but like they're, that's intentionally misleading because they met a month after his wife died but they didn't start dating until a few months later if you count all those months up okay so they were in some sort of entanglement for nearly three years nearly three years but not starting a month after the wife died no they met they, oh, actually it says beginning innocently enough a month after his wife's means death means i met you at work and i know you the fact that he started dating is not unexpected. He was single and a widower after all, not cheating. But his amorous activity certainly didn't align with how he regularly yanked viewers' heartstrings with on-air announcement about his lack of a love life since his wife died. He later touchingly admitted to one pre-show kiss on the Bachelor Happy Hour podcast. Okay, so they're coming for him because he was with this girl for three years, but he said on the show like he hasn't known true love. It, it seems like it was just a situation ship and she's getting caught up. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, like she thought it was more than it was. So this relationship with Carolyn is not the only relationship the Golden Bachelor and Jerry produced to producers fail to mention. This fall, a reporter from the U.S. Sun reached out to Heather, a waitress at the Shady Nook, a bar and restaurant located on the lake in Hudson, Indiana, next door to Gary's new lake house. So close that he'd essentially made it his bachelor clubhouse. Why did the Sun reach out to Heather? Right. Heather, who no longer works there, considered Gary her friend. She told the reporter that in the past six years, he dated a couple of women. They weren't all long-term, but they weren't short-term either. He was with a couple of women for a decent amount of time, but it just didn't work out. Well, what's a decent amount of time? Uh, three- no, so let's say he dated a couple. So the fact that they didn't include it on the show makes all these people like liars. It's TV. No, but these articles are intentionally vague. Not for a long time, not for a short time. Everybody has a different idea of what a decent amount of time for a relationship is. Like, also, he said he hasn't had love since his wife passed. So, okay, he didn't love these women. Sorry, girls. Like, No, and a lot of people at that age just date for um, companionship. companionship. This is right. so sick. Wait, Carolyn, the first girl for three years, didn't want the years of her life as the Golden Bachelor's girlfriend to become a national news fodder, but neither did she want to be the invisible woman whispered about in Davenport as the gullible gal Stop. Gary dumped, duped Stop. and then dumped. So Susan McCreary, who's a close friend of Carolyn. It's giving Karen McCluskey is what it's giving. I just can't believe this happened to my girlfriend, she said. (laughs) When Caroline and Gary first started dating in September 2017, my husband and I took them to an Iowa Hawkeyes football game. I thought, this guy's legit. This guy's a really good guy for her. McCreary recalled watching the show and hearing Gary say that line about not having having been kissed for six years. And I'm like, what? He's got to know what people, that people are paying attention to the show. I'm just flabbergasted. At first, Carolyn tried to laugh it off, but then The Golden Bachelor became a ratings bonanza. The show was suddenly the talk of pop culture, considered a breakthrough for its positive portrayal of sexually active seniors. And it bothered Carolyn that her ex was foisting lines and moving on to the bachelorettes that he had used to seduce her. I just want to say she was surprised that the show was a success. It's The Bachelor. So he had texted Carolyn on September 2nd, 2017, less than three months, now they're saying three months, after Tony's death, his wife. He says, damn, I go to bed at night thinking of you and wake up in the morning thinking of you. That's so sweet. That's literally so sweet. So because he sent that text, he's not allowed to break up with her? No, it's insane. I guess the one lie I'm really detecting is he said he hadn't been kissed in six years and and there were kisses that happened. Okay, has anybody watched the show Unreal? Do you know how much Bachelor producers manipulate everything? 
There's other women in here. I'm not in the mood to read this entire article. You would think just, that, like, honestly, grown women would not be acting this way. Like, I expect it when, like, yeah. you know, Jed's ex-girl, yep. like, girlfriend is actually yep. his girlfriend and she yep. comes forward. Yep. I was yep. his girlfriend. Yep. He's on the yep. show. But, like, yep. Karen yep. McCluskey's in her 50s and, like, you really want to drag Gary now? The man's, like, just trying to find love and set, like, a, a nice, uh, realistic expectation for seniors in love? No, it, it's so absurdly stupid. I can't get over it. Uh, that's, and honestly, the Hollywood Reporter should be ashamed of themselves. Like, everyone should be ashamed. Of, and it's like they dug this deep and this was the worst that they came up with. Gary's probably an amazing guy. I agree. I hope Gary just lets this roll off his back. I don't know. The, it's it's hard. Actually, but when he's you're old. New. He's old. Hopefully he's wise and he knows yeah. it doesn't matter and he can ignore the noise. Insane. We stand with you, Gary. Yeah. That's crazy. Is it really like actually canceling him or it's just like they're trying to I don't think anybody cares like it's hard to cancel someone who's 60 and like probably just made an Instagram and a, and a Twitter like he's you know? like okay so I'll leave yeah oh okay I'll just not post <laughs> yeah and as stated he has plenty of jobs and skills and he doesn't need the internet no that like work thing really bothered me yeah like, it, it was very judgmental and elitist like he installed hot tubs and and what? And what about it? So, no, I guess the point, just to be, you know, devil's advocate, it's like he said he retired at 55, but he's still working. This, these people are disgusting. Like, seriously, we're clowning on someone for, you know, living the American dream. Jealous. No, it, and it's like, why are you digging it on Gary? Why? Yeah. What did he do to you? It's bad faith. Bad faith actors, 1,000% being badly faithful to their bad faith. And acting while doing it in the various manner. So dumb, so dumb. Well, I'm glad that we parsed through that and I can go into the holiday watching Golden Bachelor, feeling proud of my support for Gary and his hot tub dreams. and trades. His hot tub dreams. <laughs> his hot tub dreams. And I'm sure there's gonna be some hot tubs on the show. And I just have to say like, leave Gary alone. Leave Gary alone. This is why we can't have nice things. Seriously. It's so true. The Bachelor so like, tried to do something nice and pure, and they distilled his story down to something, you know, just that palatable. Fairy tale. We don't have all the time in the world on television. No, that's the point of The Bachelor. It's like everyone who's a lead is a loser, and they try and make them look cool and successful. Like, that's the whole premise of the show. Literally. Like, they have to make it so that, like, he's desirable for 25 women. Right. It's a show. Like, get a grip. It's show business, baby. Should can't, we dive in? If you can't handle it, don't watch. Yes, I think we shall dive in because that was like a sixth man story. Yeah. Without further ado, do, 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 here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by DraftKings Casino. Step into a world of nonstop action on DraftKings Casino. Play the classics like blackjack, roulette, and slots. Plus, enjoy exclusive games you can't find anywhere else. All you have to do is sign up, select the offer, make your deposit, and start playing from a full suite of games. It's such a blast. Download the DraftKings Casino app now and sign up with promo code THETOAST. New customers can get a deposit match up to $500 in casino credits when you deposit $5 or more. Only on DraftKings Casino with promo code THETOAST. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. You have to be 21 or older. Physically physically present in Connecticut, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia only. Voided Ontario, only opted one per opted in new customer. Minimum $5 deposit. Max match 500 in casino credits, which require 1x play through within seven days. See terms at casino.draftkings.com slash players choice for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time. All in one place, all on your terms. So whatever your reasoning may be for wanting to start a website, the best place to go is Squarespace. They're going to do it all for you top to bottom, whatever you might need a website for, whether you're getting into e-commerce, you have a side business, you want to display your work, you're an artist of some sorts, perhaps a poet like Casey Musgraves' ex-boyfriend. Um, 
they have amazing product features for whatever your needs are. So you can sell custom merch, which will create passive income. It'll also engage your audience. Of course, you can create an online store with Squarespace where you can sell your products online. Then they also have a point of sale. So if you're selling online, but you want to sell in person at like a trade show or something, you can sell in person by connecting a Square Reader to the Squarespace app. Then you'll keep all your orders, inventory, and customer data in sync with your online store. So it's just really organized and really easy. They have super flexible website templates. You can get started with one of their professional templates with designs for every category and use case and then customize your look, update your content, and add features to fit your unique unique needs. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toast. That way you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That's squarespace.com slash T-O-A-S-T when you're ready to launch your website and you'll get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or a domain. Today's episode is also brought to you by Wella. Wella Professionals has over 140 years of experience, developed, developed initially for professional use only and previously only has been sold in salons and it's consistently ranked among the top loved brands by professional stylists. But the Wella Professionals new line, the Ultimate Repair line, is the most premium premium line to date. It was developed by 100 with 140 years of experience and research to deliver the very best. And now you can get your hands on it. The Miracle Hair Rescue repairs hair in only 90 seconds. So Ultimate Repairs Miracle Hair Rescue is a leave-in spray treatment designed to work on wet hair. If you have... Um, use a lot of heat on your hair and you're always wanting to make sure you're using the right products before using heat. I love the Wella Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue. It smells so good. I'm like so into products that smell good because now when I work out, I'm just like so nervous about my scalp smelling. It smells so good. You spray it on your wet hair before you start styling. Let I use like 10 pumps, you know, coat generously and then just let it sit for at least 90 seconds and then you can style as normally. Your hair will look shiny and healthy. I really love the product. It has rich textures and floral scents and it is designed for all hair types and textures. It is a perfect luxury leave-in spa treatment and everyone can benefit from it. You can try the Ultimate Miracle Repair Miracle Hair Rescue with uh, 10% off. So if you go on Amazon, it's the Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue from Wella. You can get 10% off on Amazon of the travel size by using promo code 10TOAST. That's 10-T-O-A-S-T. Ultimate Repair Miracle Hair Rescue, 10% off with that code. I love that it's just easy to apply. You can leave it in all day. It's safe on colored hair. It can be applied right after you towel dry your hair. It's easy. It's fabulous. It's just a great thing to add to your routine. Thanks, La. You're welcome, Fa. Our first story, and move that will surprise no one, Kourtney Kardashian in ingests her juicy placenta mm. after her son Rocky's birth. I so, told you this. I Courtney posted on her Instagram her mommy made encapsulation placenta pills, which she showed was her juicy placenta. And she talked about a lot of the benefits of eating your placenta. And I would like to discuss with my sister, La Turd, our mm -hmm. thoughts on this. So, here are mm -hmm. some of the benefits she said that people report higher energy levels, lesser chance of baby blues, lesser mm -hmm. chance of postpartum depression, balanced mood and hormones, increased milk supply. Ooh, tempting. Oh. Enhanced bonding experience with baby, higher iron levels, reduced postnatal bleeding, uterus returning back to pre-pregnancy size faster, losing the baby weight faster, ooh, tempting, and overall faster and better recovery from having the baby. So it was not an ad she just wanted to share. I mean, if yeah. anybody on the planet is going to eat their placenta, like it is going to be Kourtney Kardashian. So this is, it would be more surprising if she wasn't doing this. Because a lot of people, even like non-super crunchy people do it. Mm -hmm. Um... And I just want to get your thoughts. Like, do you think that you would be eating your placenta? Honestly, I'm not entirely against it. Like, I have known that people do this for a while. And when I first heard it, I knew that people did it primarily to combat, combat postpartum depression. So, like, anything you can do, sure. But I have also heard, and I'm sure Courtney got, like, the best of the best. But a lot of these companies that, did she do a capsule? They put it yes, in, like, a pill? Yes. Like, a lot of the times that process strips your placenta of all its nutrients by the time you get it in that capsule. Interesting. I've also read on the contrary side that like the function of the placenta is kind of to like filter out like toxic things mm. in your body like so that they don't make its way to the baby because it, mm. it's like the conduit between you and your baby. So it's kind of like all the things that your baby didn't get for a reason. Oh, that's interesting for sure. Like if there uh, if there was like a definitive answer like yes, it's good for you, it's bad, it's not for you, like I would do it. Yeah, you wouldn't be icked out. No, I'm not going to sit down with a fork and a knife and start cutting it like that. The thing is, I feel like if you want to eat your placenta, like you actually have to take a bite out of it. Like these No, pills, I know people do it in like a shake where like they'll literally put chunks of placenta with like 
chunks. Ice it's not pills. Like, no, no, no. Like, the, like more raw. Okay, because I feel like if you're going to do it, you got to go raw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. want fork and knife. It's literally that scene in Game of Thrones where Daenerys, like, eats that heart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and this reminds me of the episode of the Kardashians where they pranked everyone into thinking that they ate a placenta. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that Courtney pills hers and doesn't just, like, go straight from the Raw. source. Right. But I have to imagine, like, she's so health girly. She probably did extensive research. Yeah, and- I think also the thing with this, it's like, it could have all these benefits if it, if it does what it, you think it's going to do. Or worst case scenario, like it doesn't do much, but it might make you feel better. It's like a placebo placenta. Like really, yeah, what's it's a the placebo downside? for sure. Unless it's well, like the I downside said, is the thing you, that you met, you just said, right? But that's not proven either. Like there's not too much actual information. It's you know what Courtney said is some of the benefits people report. That's not like proven benefits. Just like how I feel. I'm not against it. Like it's obviously sounds crazy and gross, but like it kind of makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they ate their placentas back in the day. Like, when did this start? And where did we get the idea? I guess other animals. I think we're the only mammals that don't eat their placentas naturally. Oh. So we're else. just, like, copying, like, our our mammal friends. Mammal. Yeah, the mammals, if it's good enough for the mammals, it's good enough for me. Right? I mean, we're all one and the same. Yeah, I'm not entirely against this. And I think a lot of people like probably would assume that I would be and like drag people because it's like gross. But no, whatever the mamas need to do to be okay. Like, I don't care. Yeah, placentophagia, that's I guess what it's called, is a behavior present in almost all female terrestrial eutherian mammals, more than 4,000 species consisting of the ingestion of the placenta. Hmm. The more you know, but then three articles down, no, you shouldn't eat your placenta. Here's why. Well, I don't know. These are the same people who are writing about Gary from Indiana. So I don't know who to trust anymore. I don't know. I I don't know. Is eating the placenta beneficial? To date, there's no evidence from human studies to support these claims. You could say that about anything. I know. It's just, it's a personal preference. It's a personal preference. Kim ate her placenta too. Oh, I wouldn't say that for her. Right. The placenta is just kind of this, it just transcends everything. Yeah, it does. And it's, you know, more personal than comedy, more personal than Did you have to push out your placenta or it was just like, Uh, yeah, it came out? Well, no, no, you have to, the doctor has to take it out and either they press down on your belly. I wasn't paying attention. It's it's nothing compared to giving birth. Like, yeah, Yeah. they can really like press it out or maybe you give like one more push, but nothing of note. Interesting. And then it's gone. It's big. Really? Like the size of the baby? Yeah. Uh, maybe like in width. Yeah. It's like a nice big. Big what? Like piece of meat? It, honestly, like when we did the brisket. When we cooked oh. the brisket. Oh, Why did you have like, to ruin the brisket for me? That looks like a placenta. Wow. And then what do they do with it if you don't want they it? They send it for testing. Oh. I'm pretty sure. I wonder if they okay. do that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do that for every one. They send it for testing. But if you want to eat it, you have to wait for the testing? Yeah, I think you can uh, fill out a form to get it back. I don't know. It's There's a way a to retrieve. Work, honestly. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, and then you have to get it to the place. And it's like, is it on ice the whole time? Right, that's what I was saying about the capsules. Like, by the time you actually get it into powder capsules, what's the point? What happens to your placenta? Oh, actually, this conversation is making me like a little nauseous. Really? Yeah. It's beautiful. No, like. You can discard it, in which case your hospital or birthing center will take care of it. So that's kind of sad. You could take your placenta home. And in some places, people bury their placenta. It's so fascinating. Beyond. The placenta is more personal than comedy, more personal that's than That's true. That's true. So. Glad Courtney's eating hers. Me too. I'll make you placenta pills as your push present. Thanks. I'd prefer like a diamond necklace, but go off. (laughs) A placenta necklace. (laughs) Ew. Our next story. Kristen Cavallari reveals the hottest guy she's ever hooked up with. Do you want to take a guess before I share with you? Jay Cutler. No, that would be so nice if she said that. 
Tyler Cameron. But I don't Tyler know Cameron. Talking. Oh, yeah. She said Tyler Cameron, and believe it or not, you guys, I know this is really freaking hard to believe. He's hotter in person. She said it's insane. So what do yeah. people mean these days when they say hook up? Does so they fuck? okay. I don't think so. They're kind of. They never had a relationship. He was in her campaign for... Un- she used him and paid him for publicity. Right. But they did like kiss in the ad. So yeah. maybe that was the hookup. But then also like there was like a video of them like dancing sexily at a mm-hmm. party. So I don't know if they like hooked up offline. But she has maintained that they never like had any sort of relationship. Yeah. No. That was clear. Um No. Like Tyler Cameron is the hottest man alive. And he's literally could not be a nicer person and is so lovely and it makes him hotter yeah he should be people's sexiest man alive because like that's really what he is he's actually by definition sexy yeah that's actually an amazing point he really should be people's yeah (laughs) what (laughs) oh actually this just reminded me i went out to dinner last night and there was a man in the restaurant who was so beautiful like it was shocking how old my age like nothing like maybe a little bit older how would you feel if your father was dating someone your age (laughs) and he was wearing this just like you know beige cashmere sweater he was just so well dressed well coiffed he had this like beautiful blonde hair and like honestly like everyone in the restaurant was looking at him he was he was otherworldly like he was so beautiful where did you go to dinner I, when I decided I wanted to share this story on the toast as I walked to work this morning, I knew you were going to ask me that. And I think I should not say because like his sister's probably a toaster. Like I don't need that sort of. Oh, the the man. But why, yeah. I didn't know you went to dinner last night. Yeah. I We literally spoke on the phone. And I said I just got back from dinner. I, I didn't hear that. Who did you go to dinner with? My friends from college. Your friends from college? Aren't yeah, those your well, friends from high school? Well, something shady about this dinner, La. Oh, no, 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 no. I was, I actually don't know how to describe him because they went with Abe, who's my best friend from like high school. But then also Margot Fish, who's my friend from college. But me, Abe, and Margot became like a threesome in college. So I think describing them as my friends from college is accurate. Okay, technically. But then also Margot Fish became a part of your high school group of friends. Like, yes, yes, when yes. When you get together with your high school friends, she's there. She's there. But I know Margot from college. That was so crazy. Yeah. Oh, there's another conspiracy kind of going around in the toastum. I don't know if you've seen. I don't know if you've seen it because it has to do with me. But you cut me off the other day when I was about to say a story of something that happened in college. Oh yeah. I started to say it twice and I got cut off both times and then I just like gave up. What was the story? Everyone wants to know the story. Okay, you said a conspiracy theory about me. No, no, I said about me. Oh, okay, okay. I said about the like the toast. There's like okay, okay. People like What's were petitioning story? to hear the story. It's like not. Is this a great when you story. fell off your bike? No, no, no. We were talking about brainy quotes. You falling off your bike is the best story. When you fell, sorry, sorry. She, Claudia doesn't want to hear my brainy quotes college story. Oh fuck yeah 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 okay go. But it's not even that great of a story, which is kind of why I gave up trying to say it. Like it's really not that great. But I feel like any story that starts with like in college one time, you think is going to be really great but I'll just I'll let you know so there was um someone who wrote uh his paper and I don't know where so he left it somewhere and you know how sometimes you would start a paper with a quote oh uh, it's, it's like, like the laziest <laughs> move ever yeah <laughs> it's like a really profound way to start a paper like a quote that kind of encapsulates what you're about to talk about gets the reader inspired Albert Einstein once said yeah no or it's just like speak sh- strong and carry a big stick yeah and then you get into you know policy anyway so we found someone's paper in the top of the paper had a quote and he had his uh citation and when he went to the citation at the bottom it was brainyquotes.com <laughs> that's a story that's a, it was just an anecdote about brainy quotes yeah 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 and like is brainy quote a legitimate site source you can cite well, that's just like not where the quote originated from. Right, right. And do you have to source a quote? Let me just tell you, like bibliography culture you is You do bullshit. have to source a quote. Otherwise, you could just be making up quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was never into bibliographies. No. I, I'm into sourcing. But I'm not into bibliography format. No, yeah. I just wanted my bibliography to write like, trust me, you know? 
Yeah, no, like, I just want to be able to, like, bullet points, like, here's where I was looking at, you know, go find it for right. yourself. Not, like, MLS, the quotations. MLS, Chicago. Like, the quotations, what's that? the commas, the underlines. So true. It's why sickening. Did we, why did we need to learn that? I don't know, but now it's like, I kind of wish people were learning bibliographies instead of the poison they are learning, you know? Yeah, yeah. Let's go back to the MLS. Let's go back to MLM, Okay. Things were so simple when we were all just selling leggings. Let's go back to MLM. Take me back. Some people are still there. Yeah, good for them. Some I, I people love, are. I love the girlies on TikTok. Like, who cannot be deterred? Like, MLMs could not have a worse reputation. Like, I feel like these days, like, if you join an MLM, there's enough information for you out there for, like, you to be turned off to it. And so if you're so resolute in your desire to sell makeup or whatever, like, I have such respect for people just like doing the opposite of what everyone's telling them to do. Agreed. But then how do you feel about those people when it doesn't work out? Like being like, I'm a, I'm victim. a victim. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't thought through my whole, I don't have like a fully thought out thesis on like MLM. Like at this point, if you open eyes, enter into an MLM. Right. What happens next for better or for worse, you are responsible for. Right. No, but that's also like now. If you were to literally just like walk by Scientology and and go in, how do you not know? Right. Right. You're grown adults. Take responsibility for the choices that you make, especially when there's ample information out there. That's all we can do as grown adults. I, 100%. Our next story, Christmas is heating up. By the way, I watched a Christmas tree lighting last night. Kelly hosted a two-hour live special where she sang like five times. Finally, on she's getting to work at being our America's sweetheart. It was incredible. It was sure. so well done. First of all, David Foster and Catherine McPhee sang. Everybody just sang the classics. They're kind of the new faces of Christmas. Don't at me. They were. She was spectacular. She is. Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer sang. Um, what did she sing? Like they all sound the same. Jingle bells, something like that. No, Catherine McPhee did jingle bells. And I don't remember what, um, maybe I'll be home for Christmas. She was impeccable. Liz Gillies and Seth MacFarlane did a duet. Adorable. They love the Christmas night, as well. The night ended with a, a duet of Cher and Darlene Love. It was breathtaking. Like, it really was. And then Kelly, of course, did a few of her originals. And then they lit the tree. It was stunning. Beautiful. You would never know. You didn't see on TV like all the chaos that ensued at no, the tree No, no, that they're like people, yeah, animals came and like. Like the Hamas tried to fuck protesters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they did, but I guess it didn't make it to TV. No, it didn't make it to TV. And then after that was Christmas at Graceland hosted by Lainey Wilson, where they had Lana Del Rey, Casey Musgraves, Lainey Wilson, a bunch of people performing. I fell asleep, but I do wish I recorded it. It was really beautiful. And they literally set up like little stages inside of Graceland. I'm sure it'll be on Hulu or whichever streamer is affiliated with the network. Peacock. It was like a gorgeous night of programming at NBC. They crushed it. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Santa, can't you hear me? Well, now is some um, Christmas programming, not okay. NBC. Um, okay. Lifetime has its first ever Christmas movie with a sex scene. Oh my God. And guess who's starring in it? Gretchen Wieners. No, uh, but I feel like you could guess. I don't think you will, but if you want it, if we sat here long enough, I feel like you could. Okay, give me like three clues. Okay. She is an actress. I would hope so. She's an influencer. She's a podcaster. Becca Tobin? No, but that's a great guess. She's a podcaster, influencer, and actress? Yeah, actress first. Okay. And then, but now oh, I would say. I know. Jana Kramer. Jana Kramer stars in Lifetime's first Christmas movie with a sex scene. More like Triple X Miss, Jana Kramer's uh, upcoming Lifetime movie, A Cowboy Christmas Romance, mm. is the network's first movie with a sex scene. So she was actually pregnant while filming the movie. Oh, wow. And she said it's on her podcast. She said it's the first Lifetime Christmas movie that has a sex scene. When I read it, I was like, well, this is going to be interesting. I'm like, how are we going to do this with a baby? The movie portrays Lexi Crenshaw, a real estate closer who returns to her hometown of Tubac, Arizona, to try to convince Kobe Mason, a horse whipping rancher, to give oh my, up. I you're going to say a whore. To give up his family's land while also reconsidering returning home to her roots. 
about the steamy scene. She said, we're on this, spoiler alert, he lays me down on some hay. And then we, <laughs> and then we, you know, and then, you know, obviously it's still lifetime, it's still family, but it was pushing limits there too. I do feel like Lifetime got so surpassed by Hallmark in the Christmas category that this is an attempt to, you know, just do to one up the most. Yeah. But the thing is, with these types of films, the whole point of them and why they're so different and weird and why people are drawn to them is because they're like so conservative that... I, like the formula is so bizarre, but it weirdly works. It's just like these almost like these like dumb made for TV movies that have so much heart and they like don't make a lot of sense, but they're really well done. And I think this might complicate that formula. Well, I think Lifetime does need to find a way to differentiate himself because there is Lifetime Christmas movies, there's Hallmark, there's Netflix, like Hulu, everyone's making Christmas movies. They're all following the Hallmark template, but I, I commend Lifetime for literally stepping their pussy up. And they saying, did step their literal pussy up. We're going to do Christmas different. Like if you want a little smut with your Christmas jolly good fun, come over to Lifetime. I think that they're offering something new and different and, and that might resonate with viewers. No, but it's still on cable. So like they're really, they're not going to be doing like Game of Thrones no, vibes. No, it's going to be soft. Right. Maybe if they did do like hardcore smut Christmas, um, maybe on their app or something. That would be powerful. That's the title. A Hardcore Smut Christmas. No, the title of my Christmas smut movie would be Got it. <laughs> Christmas is coming. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I Christmas was, is coming, and so am I. I was singing Jingle Balls. Oh, love that too. But it's not, mine's a little bit more subtle. Or this isn't a title. We could work through it. Workshop. Yeah, something about like a ho 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 Christmas. So I was thinking, like, I, my one I was gonna say, if you read it, it doesn't sound bad. It was more like my intonation, like holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> oh, if you say it like that, everything is good. Yeah, right. Santa Claus is coming to town. Right. Or like... Deck the balls. I don't know. Deck the balls. Deck the balls. This is a genre that's ripe for exploration. It's so true. Get and to I work. And I think Jana's the woman to do it. Lifetime I mean, Jana is network in, for it. Jana's like a, a God-fearing woman, like... But she was in Entourage, and she was a very promiscuous college student. Mm. Yeah. No, I think I think this is a really good like first step for Lifetime. I think they're the right network. I think they got the right girl. This story looks like a beautiful love story about a horse whipping rancher. I know I've told the story a thousand times, but I can't talk about Lifetime Christmas movies without talking about the one I saw with my Bialik. No, you literally can't. What was that? I, I was on tour and there was like one channel on the TV. So I watched this Lifetime Christmas movie. But it was like a Hanukkah. Bialik. It was a Hanukkah movie. And oh. that's why you like don't like when they do Hanukkah movies. And I just don't like when they do Hanukkah movies, period. Like, like we don't, not everything has to be like for, like it's for about everyone. the Christmas movies. No, it's so true. Like the Hanukkah movie, it's it was sad. so bad. It was bad. It's It's always bad. And like representation is nice, but like, the non-Jews can have Christmas. It's okay with me. Yeah, they can have their holiday movies. Like, it's yeah. fine. It's fine. Yeah, that's your Mayim Bialik story. Yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I was able to bring that up today. Thanks for choosing that story. <laughs> it's been bursting all year long. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? If it's our next story, that's brought to you by State Farm. The State Farm Personal Price Plan helps you create an affordable price just for you. The plan is all about being personal to you and to your needs. So that means you're getting the coverage you want, a policy that helps cover what's important to you, and an affordable price just for you. Because after all, life is just better when you can personalize your experiences. So think about it like this. From your go-to coffee order to your favorite pair of sweatpants, we know that you love to personalize your entire day just like we do. You know... When it comes to food, Jackie and I are so different. She loves a breakfast taco. Personally, it's just not my thing, but Jackie just kind of 
is obsessed with them like endlessly she would have them every day if she could um and we're so different like that and insurance you have something to say? I mean, I only have a breakfast taco when I come to New York because it's next to the studio. I heard a rumor from Julia that you actually eat three a day when I'm not there. Oh, I mean, this is common. Everyone's constantly spreading rumors about me. My doorman said I was pregnant yesterday. There's just, don't believe everything you read, Jax. Clearly, personalization makes everything better, and State Farm believes that insurance should work the same way. Your plan, your coverage, and your selections can all be personalized to you. <clears throat> Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer, availability, and eligibility may vary. Jax, hit me. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Today's episode is also brought to you by Blue Nile. We've never heard anyone complain about receiving jewelry as a present. I think we can all agree it's the premium gift. But it can be tricky to get the gift right. And when you're investing in a piece for yourself or for anyone else, you want to make sure that everything about it is absolutely perfect. And that's why we want to share what makes us feel the best about a jewelry purchase. And that's when we source it from BlueNile.com. Blue Nile offers thousands of independently graded diamonds and fine jewelry at prices significantly below traditional retail. Whether you're looking for a bit of summer sparkle for yourself or a gift for someone special, Blue Nile offers peace of mind with every purchase with some of the highest quality standards in the industry. You can design your own earrings for something custom and fresh or you can check out their necklaces for a timeless essential the process of shopping on blue nile is just fun and easy and it's different and i really like that their um pieces are made with the highest quality and they have really high standard but it's also reasonable and affo- not affordable but you know reasonably priced for what you're getting it's high quality it's stuff. premium stuff the things that we've gotten from blue nile are gorgeous beautiful if you have questions blue nile's jewelry experts are on hand 24 7 via phone or chat from tech questions to budget suggestions they're here to help you find a gift that you can feel good about blue nile also offers 30-day returns and a diamond price match guarantee so you can always rest easy knowing that you've made the right choice experience the ease and convenience of shopping blue nile today at blue nile.com that's blue n i L-E dot com. Thank you, La. You're welcome. Our next story. Elon Musk tells advertisers who left X, quote, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX and the owner of X, formerly Twitter, sends, says that the current advertiser boycott could kill the company. So he was interviewed by Andrew Ross Sorkin on Wednesday afternoon at the New York Times Deal Book Summer, and he is making headlines, waves, yeah. The memes. clip was everywhere. The clip was everywhere. So the interviewer asked him, like, what about advertisers leaving the platform? And Why are advertisers leaving the platform? Advertisers are leaving the platform because of that thing that he tweeted like a week or two ago about the, he responded to a tweet about Jewish communities, which I want to talk about that initial okay. tweet. People are saying that like it was anti-Semitic what he said. Okay. He later clarified. So he had quote tweeted a tweet that said like uh, something uh, calling out like Jewish communities and how they've kind of all bought into like these progressive ideas that are now being wielded against them. Mm-hmm. And and Elon responded, this is the actual truth. Now, the tweet itself was clumsy because it, sa- it made it seem like all Jews. Right. Ha- all Jews are progressive and into that stuff. And also that like all progressives are Jews, which is just not true. And Elon mm-hmm. had since clarified like that's not what he meant. Um, and but so, Elon also just got back from a trip from Israel. Like I, I'm, what Elon I'm did going to, to call someone anti-Semitic because of a tweet when they literally just got back from Israel and visited the kibbutz and visited with families. Like I'm sorry, that is that's more important and more right. indicative of anything. Right. And the interviewer had started the question. I think he was trying to say like, was that press were kind of like just to make up for that tweet, like oh. to smooth it over? Like, does this person know Elon? Has he ever like a done anything to appeased. appease anyone when he says something that he believes he like immediately clarified that he was talking about specific Jewish groups like the ADL which mm-hmm. by the way like it's true and it's like kind of a reckoning going on in the Jewish community right now of like how the progressive cause has completely left us out and a lot of progressive Jews are like what, what the, fuck? the fuck like and what no, about they don't us? know they don't know where to turn it's been like a it's been a lot of Jews who are extremely progressive and identify so much of their identity is rooted in that progressivism are having like identity crises now and they really don't know where to turn because you know when you've devoted so much of your identity to standing up for what you believe and then nobody stands up for you you're like well what the fuck how do we get here how do we get out right also speaking of your girl Mayim Bialik did a video talking about this did you see her video it was a few weeks ago 
Okay, what'd she say? Um, How she's just like left heartbroken by all of like her, per- like she thought that she was a part of this movement and she was marching with this group and that group and this group and that group and like she's been completely left, left out, out of it. And she's kind of, you know, coming to that realization. You should watch that video to understand like what's kind of going on. I think a the lot context, of people right. have seen that video. Anyway, so that's just kind of what Elon was saying when people like were like, this is anti-Semitic. He's like, I'm talking about like specific Jewish groups, not the entire Jewish community. And then so advertiser. And then also it was kind of like a media matters. It's a campaign against him to slander his, him as an anti-Semite and take him out for yeah. that but like he's not an anti-semite I, I don't believe him to be an anti-semite i no, really don't not at all he then went to israel i don't think it was to appease anyone because as it's clear he doesn't do that he literally told advertisers to go fuck themselves what no, he said he doesn't was do that but also like taking a 13 hour trip to a war zone is not something you do to appease people you do it because you think it's the right thing to do right no if you want to appease people you make a donation you make a or an apology right you educate yourself and listen and learn right um no but he went to israel he met with hostage families he met with victim families like he's wearing a dog tag with victim's name on it who said he said he will not take this dog tag necklace off until they come home like that's not something you can fake and he's not a faker so no i agree i at this present moment, no issues with Mr. Musk. No issues with Mr. Musk. But anyways, you know, they're always trying to take out Mr. Musk. And now this anti-Semitism thing is being used as like a label. a label so that they can stop advertising with him. Also, a couple of advertisers, their advertisements had appeared next to, um, I didn't I, I didn't see it, but what they're saying is like Nazi things. Um, Wait, what? Like, I don't, I don't know exactly what it was, but there was like advertisers on Twitter their mm-hmm. advertisers like were next to anti-semitic rhetoric nazi propaganda but like isn't that on every platform right right um, anyway so what he said was he said don't advertise if someone is going to try and blackmail me with advertising blackmail me with money go fuck yourself go fuck yourself is that clear hey bob if you're in the audience that's bob how Iger. i bob Iger, disney because they pulled their ads that's how i feel don't advertise and then the interviewer is like but elon if you don't have advertisers you don't have a business what are you going to do um and he said that if that's what's going to happen then that's what's going to happen and the whole earth will know that x went down because of these advertisers and that uh he said quote let the chips fall where they may did he say that he said it but did he do the hand motion did he say no. let the chips fall where they may no that no he didn't and so he that needs to, he needs to do better and he said of the post that sparked the advertiser exodus the post i was just telling you about i should in retrospect not have replied to that particular post and should have expanded in greater length about what i meant i handed a loaded gun to those who hate me he added right. calling it one of the most foolish things he had said on the platform yeah i um i'm just like i'm focused on like on real anti-semitism like not this like it's strategic you know right. I'm focused on like people who are really anti-semitic and like go out and, and cause violence and hurt Jews and say things like hit like I'm focused on like real anti-semitism and that's I think where everyone should be from both celebrities and non-celebrities and there are plenty of celebrities who are posting the wildest anti-semitic shit the lies like if Bella and Gigi Hadid are not smeared and canceled for being anti-semitic like Elon is not even on the list no and I I'm hesitant to call her a celebrity but that girl from Fifth Harmony, have you seen her Twitter, Lauren? Yeah. She, you know, when she starts coming out with the you people, I know everything I need to know. And she's deeply unwell and she needs to get the fuck off the internet. Now I would say, you know, she'll never work in this town again, but she pretty much already handled that for herself before Gaza, you and know? She's also so small, even if she were getting canceled, I don't know, like the headlines would be so big, but she's not not a famous person like no she, she's recognized and i you, fifth harmony was global for a moment she's literally a hamas fan girly you it's have insane. to read her twitter it's insane and there's a there's a lot of people like that who are you know operating at that level celebrity intellectual political journalists like no cancellations so, it's like it's it's open dialogue so elon so elon re- replied to a tweet that wasn't perfectly quaffed and Felt bad about it, clarified, and then took a trip to Israel. I'm seriously, I'm not going to lose sleep over this. There are worse things going on. No, not for one second. But um, the big news was pretty much, go fuck yourself. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob. Bob, what's good? This is tough for us. 
because Bob is a, a a real fixture here at the toast. He is, but he's more of like, it's the idea of Bob, you know? No, and it's like, what does Bob represent? No, I literally, I don't know Bob, but he's just like the, it's the idea of him. He's the head of Disney. He was the head of like the studios against the SAG Astra. Right. Like he is a symbol and he's interchangeable. I'm sorry, Bob. He literally just lost his Disney job and got it back. Like he's yeah interchangeable. It's true. Elon, once in a lifetime. It's true. <laughs> not like other businessmen and lob. Literally not like other businessmen. So that's the latest business news. Are you ready for our fifth and final story? I am. Like my eye is twitching and I'm annoyed. Okay, but it's sports news. Oh. Does that get you perked up? It does. And it's Aaron Rodgers news. I saw him practicing. Aaron Rodgers returns to the practice field 11 weeks after Achilles heel surgery. He's eyeing a December 24th comeback. <gasps> oh my God, Christmas! Christmas is coming and so is Aaron. Christmas is coming. And so is Aaron. Now this could be a smut novel movie too, like where he's like yeah, injured. Yeah, he falls in love with the physical therapist. He's injured and it's a big Christmas game. Will he make it? And then of course he makes it. They win him and his physical therapist have Christmas together. They fuck the end. Yeah, and he was had so many walls up because, you know, he football was, was hard. No, yeah. he was angry when he came into PT and he was like, I don't need this. I can do it. He tries to stand up on his own. You know, that's a classic scene. And he can't. She, she, he falls, she catches him. She, he has to accept her help. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. The Jets quarterback who tore his Achilles heel in the season opener in September made his first appearance on the practice field with teammates on Wednesday. In a press conference, Jets head coach Robert Sala addressed his return to practice after news broke that his 21-day 20 20 practice window had started. The window expires on December 20th, giving the team a three-week period to decide whether or not to remove Rodgers from the injured reserve. Should he be removed, he could potentially be on the field for the t December 24 matchup against the Washington Commanders. Okay, I wish like it was a more exciting team, like like with famous people on it, but I'll take what I can get. Okay, but also the good news is that the Cowboys just beat the Commanders, and like the Cowboys aren't the best team in the NFL. So, like, so this, the Commanders stink. So the Jets have a chance at winning and, and getting a little confidence. Yeah, and Aaron looking good, and then going back to his physical therapist. We did it. No, this is so crazy. He said, he was like, I will make a historic comeback. I will be back in December. Like, he didn't give up on New York, and New York certainly did not give up on him. But it's been a dark couple of weeks with Zach Wilson at the helm. Like, he's just ill-equipped. And I appreciate him stepping in at a time when we needed him, but his time is definitely up. Yeah. Aaron goes back to December all the time. There's a song for, there's a Taylor Swift song for every part of Aaron Rodgers' journey. No, it's true. That's why he's such a Swifty. Like the morning of the game against the Commanders. Are you ready for it? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> like, there's a song. And then after he wins. I mean. New Year's Day. There's and just glitter wait, on the floor after the party. And just wait until Taylor writes her NFL-inspired album for Travis Kelsey. Like, oh, 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 it's over for Aaron it's Rodgers. It's Aaron coded. 100%. So I am hoping for a speedy recovery what a thrill. for Aaron, December 24th. Hopefully he'll be back on the field. I'd rather see him up there shaking that thing. We're all going to be together for like the Christmas Day football. Shapiro was at my house. He was like so excited that we were like excited to watch. Yeah. And it's just going to be a family affair. All the cameras coming out for a family affair. All right. All right. All oh, right. I had one more thing to say to you and to everyone, which is that. I finished Iron Flame. Oh my God, I didn't. I finished Iron Flame. And? And I think it's my end of the road for the series. It's, it's, not, that, it's not them, it's me. Like, I, it was always a little young for me and a little you know, silly. And I, it was too much of my precious time taken up by reading this book. That's what um, I felt. I feel that. But I think like Snitch loved it. We'll do a mini recap on the Redheads. I'm happy I'm happy for like the Fourth Wing family. The Empyrean lives on. It was just too much for me. And I have to tap out. Yeah, I'm like 50%. I, we'll just I finish it, it up in so, days. Finish it so it wasn't time wasted. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I have to start Matthew Perry's memoir. 
for my book club. So I'm going to have to take a break from Iron Flame. Yeah. And I'm about to start Brittany. It's Brittany, Oh, Mitch. how exciting. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So I'm really happy that I finished the book because that has just been like every day. I'm like, today uh, will be the day. And today was not the day. But yesterday okay. was. Fabulous. Thank you. We love, you know, achieving our goals here at The Toast. Big or small. Every goal counts. 100%. So that is our show. Tomorrow is our final episode of the week. So be sure to tune in then. Share the toast with somebody in your life who's miserable and needs needs us. We're doing important work here. It's a hard time of year. Send the toast to someone in need. You'll be doing them a favor and us in, in due time. So thank you guys so much for listening to the Toast of Millennium Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So we're watching us on YouTube. Please don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast. Every podcast can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, IR Radio, CastBox, all the places where we listen to podcasts. Find us the toast of a five-star review about a beautiful standing in wickedly talented we are bye love ya bye